Good morning. Thank you so much for joining Inspire Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We have now entered officially into February. Isn't that a sweet thing? We made it past January and we are now in February. And that's just a blessing. And um, yeah, did you all know that Patrick uh, celebrated a birthday uh, Friday? He is officially real grown. <laughs> I don't know why I keep using the word officially, but anyway, he's grown and he didn't even know that his birthday was coming up. Right. But I believe that he had a very good birthday. But I just want to tell the Lord, thank you for uh, his life and, and grateful to be here on today. We what's, have a reason to celebrate. But here's what's funny. We, we, it wasn't that. Okay. Every time we disagree, is that our, we had a disagreement about how, how old I was. So from February, February, March of 2020, up until the middle of January of 2021, I thought I was 46. <laughs> so from February or March of 2020 till January 2021, I thought I was 46 years old. And so we were having a disagreement about how old I was. And I was like, I know how old I am. And she was like, now you, you're about to be 48. I'm like, no, I'm about to be 46 because I make a joke about my knees being 46. I mean, 47, I mean, 46. So I know I'm about to be 47, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, well, let me prove to you, since you know how old I am, since you were there when I was born, let me, and I put out my calculator and I was like, 2021, just so I can show you how it is, minus 1970. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how he looked too. <laughs> I said, I'm about to be 40, baby. Anyway. Uh -huh. it, his whole, it was it was funny. It, it was, was funny. funny. It but was. it was it was needful. But you know, I missed the whole year. Like I missed being 47. Because I thought I was 46 for a whole year. So I just missed 47. So as of today, I'll be 47 probably until June. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm in do defense, it. in defense, Patrick, of 47. Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay. In defense of 47. 2020 was one of those years. Come on, that you be like, well, well, well how old? You know, right. you just kind of, it just happened. So, you know, it's you okay. You. But it didn't pass you by because you were still in your 47th year. So the whole year wasn't gone. You caught it at the end. In a way. <laughs> Amen. <Right. laughs> but anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, let me go back. We are now starting our teaching series. Of love and marriage. Not teaching series, a uh, sermon series. Excuse me, sermon series. I'm used to saying teaching series. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay. I just want to throw that down. All right, just so. Uh, on love and marriage. And so uh, you definitely want to get your Bible and your notepad and definitely invite a friend. Um, you know, during the times that we're currently living in, it's, it's a lot of people that's, uh, they, they, we, we need answers. Mm -hmm. um, and we, this is, the, the, both of these are, uh, tough subjects or touchy subjects, like they're needful. And so if you know anyone that may be struggling with their uh, commitment to the Lord, mm -hmm. as well as their commitment to their spouse, mm -hmm. uh, would you ask them to join in with us? And would you also off, would you all also offer a word of prayer for us as I go into prayer? Uh, because we need it. Right. Amen. 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 Uh, let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for life on today. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that um, as, your, as your holy words say, you are love. You are love. And so I thank you uh, for uh, your gift of loving us. I thank you that you first loved us so that we can love you. Uh, thank you for so loving uh, the world and, and that you gave uh, your precious son, your only begotten son, so that we could truly experience love here uh, on earth and in earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, that victory belongs to you. Uh, and so with that being said, uh, we declare victory over hate. We declare victory over uh, separation over divorce anything that will keep uh marriages from uh experiencing and thriving mm -hmm. uh you throughout you know reflecting your kingdom um uh, i just pray in the name of jesus that now uh, marriages and homes and families will be restored restored legacies will be reclaimed generations will know your name to know that you know we can do all things through you because you, because you give us strength mm -hmm. and so i just thank you now i pray lord that uh, patrick and i will both minister from our overflow 
I pray in the name of Jesus that uh, we will minister and, and, and share from uh, our experiences, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. It, our story is for your glory is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Uh, we know that we we got the chance to experience uh, the goodness and the benefit of of trusting you. And so we want to fully communicate that so that others will enter in and experience uh, you as well. And so I just thank you now, Lord. May the words of, um, of Patrick's mouth and my mouth be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, you will be glorified and strengthened uh, throughout uh, our discussion in this in this uh, teaching lesson. In Jesus' name, I thank you and love you. Fill us with your spirit afresh. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we're we're gonna. So we're dealing with love and marriage, and in all honesty, like I'm supposed to lie, but in all honesty, um, the marriage part becomes easier once the love part is taken care of. And again, I think um, in my uh, uh, series with, with Labor of Love, and I talked about how love can be imitated so much so to the point that it feels real. Um, but according to the text that, and I think it's First John 4, it says that God, check this out, it says that God is love. So in order, in order for us to have genuine love for one another in any space that we're going to have love, we have to have God. Th there is no way around it. Um, because without God, you can't truly love, as we're going to go into the text, you can't truly love who God has commanded us to love, who Christ commanded us uh, to love in, in the text we're going to read. So that would be safe to say that in order for it to be authentic, true, for it to be genuine, for it to be certified, right? right? It's like... Um, yeah, for it to be heavenly approved or yes. God approved. Yeah true love so like what about other people who don't believe then um, the truth is unfortunately this is probably going to get a lot of people like disagree but unfortunately if it's not coming from god it's not real love you know what i'm saying and it's not or it's not fully experienced either well let's, let's go know, with that it's, it's not, not fully experienced yeah there there's because because you can't deny that certain people feel the way they feel, I don't care where you are and what culture you are, you have a sense of feeling for uh, your loved ones and your children and your family. And your, like that's it's endearment. A, yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a, a genuineness there, but but that long lasting, that um, uh, uh, stickability, love really does come from how we love love God and, and, in, and, in and text, us receiving I'm talking about too. the Father I'm talking about Yahweh I'm talking about Elohim yeah. amen. amen so the text I don't I didn't know which direction you wanted to go uh, so, so what I did was I didn't want us to know what so we're given we're given a text and I didn't want us to know because I wanted us to kind of bounce off each other so it wouldn't be uh, rehearsed or anything like that but uh well I would like to say this so you can chime in at any time. Okay. Yeah. So love is definitely a simple, um, it's, it's easy, however, it's complex. And what I mean by that is that when you begin to become consciously aware of love mm -hmm. and you want to really put effort into um being intentional mm -hmm. about loving, that's when it's like, okay, well, how do I do that? Then you begin to look and it's like, whoa. So now what, what exactly is my heart if mm -hmm. it's not the what's pumping in my chest? Mm -hmm. Okay, when, when so now I'm kind of going into the text, but we're in uh, Matthew chapter 22, <clears throat> verses 37 through 39. Hold on, before you do that, so, okay. she, she, so she mentioned something that, I need y'all to listen to this. She mentioned something that was very key about about love, love. Oh, this is so good, because because we are going to get into the point about marriage, and you think about it, husbands. Think about it, wives. Love is intentional. That means love. Ha, listen, love has to express itself, so that so that it can be experienced. Love is not like a genuine, true love 
it's not kept contained. to itself. It's not yeah. self-contained. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a it's it has to be. Uh, um, it's dynamic. Is the word that you're looking for? Right. Love is not static. And it has to be experienced. So when you like when you truly love your because like, we're gonna we're dealing with relationships in terms of marriage. So when you truly love, check this out. When I truly love my spouse, I am intentional about how I show that particular love, about how I extend that love. And I'm, I'm, I'm intentional about how I want her to experience the genuine love that I have for God first, which allows me to be able to, uh, to, to give that love to my spouse, extend, it. extend mm -hmm. that love to, to my wife and vice versa, the wife to the husband. Amen. And so, uh, again, I think Patrick shared this last week. We know that um, the title, the title of the sermon series is Love and Marriage. But remember, uh, we are aware that there are single individuals that are listening. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, your singleness is sacred and marriage is sacred. That is not something that we should take lightly. And so with that being said, if you are currently in a single state and you are in waiting for your spouse, you are in a very uh, beneficial place because now you can learn to love the Lord your God properly. Mm -hmm. You can learn to love your neighbor properly. <laughs> you can learn to love yourself properly. That when it comes time for you to join in partnership or in covenant relationship with another um, then you will be able to fully express it properly. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you won't have to do the study and the homework that you should have did prior to you get married, right. which uh, I think uh, that's, that is the cause of a lot of frustration in marriages today. You know, the idea of getting married and thinking that all the problems will be solved. And it's like, no, that's not it. It's like now you are sharing your personal space with someone. Right. And uh, now I need to love them, but I never learned how to love myself. I never learned the proper, right. the, the, the healthy way of loving another, a neighbor, right. genuinely, right. you know? And, and that's, I guess, that's, I guess that can be a uh, 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 practice before you, before you have one, because we hadn't got to the text yet. Y'all, when we get to it, y'all can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but it, it, like, so let me read this, because, anyway, let me read this first. All right, so this is 1 Corinthians 7. This is a different version, but. 1 Corinthians 7, and this is first, verse 32 and, and 33 and 34. Part of 34. Hilarious. All right, so he says, Paul says, I want you to be without concerns. In other words, he's saying, if you're single, so this is for the single people. If you're single, and I, I think I mentioned this last, last week, if you're single, I don't want you to be, I don't, I don't want you to have more concerns than you should. In other words, I would rather you be single than that way for those of you who are Christian. Now, this, this message really, really will be geared to more toward Christian living. It, it will. But if you're a Christian, I want you to focus in your singleness and how you can love God and love your neighbors. All right. Because I want you to be able to minister the, the, the gospel of Christ. And, and if you're single, you can focus all on your time into what you feel is one of the greatest things of all, and that's to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like, that's really what you want as a single person. So you'll find yourself engulfed in the things of God because that's what you care about the most. I think that's what Psalms 34, Psalms 37, which says, if I delight myself in the Lord, he'll give me the desires of my heart. But truly, I desire what I delight in, and that would be more of the Lord. So Paul's saying, listen, I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to have the concerns that married people have. This is the way he put it. He says, I want you to be without concerns. The unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So as a single man, as a single woman, your main concern is how do I please God? How do I please God and how in loving him? How do I please God in loving my neighbors? That's that's my and main myself. thing. Don't and myself. That's my main thing right now. God, I put it this way. God, myself, and then others. Because I can truly love others when I truly love God and love myself. So that's, then the next, verse 33. Again, 1 Corinthians 7, this is verse 33. He says, but the married man, check out what he calls it now. But the married man 
is concerned about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Like what? The things of the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> how he may please his wife and his interests are divided. Mm -hmm. So so what we're trying to do, that's the first part of it. Y'all can go and read the whole thing. What we're trying to do is get you to understand that the love part before the marriage part is such a great foundation for marriage. Say it again. The love part before the marriage part is such a great foundation. And you will begin to build upon that love that you have for God, that you have for yourself, and that you have for your neighbors as you begin to build upon that and you bring two different cultures into one house, you are better be prepared on how to love uh, your spouse. And that's, that's just my opinion. You know this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead, you can read it now. Um, so our uh, anchor text for, to, for this morning would be uh, Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Mm -hmm. And it reads, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first, this is important. This is the first and greatest commandment. Mm -hmm. I want to read 38 again. This is the first and greatest commandment. Uh, 39, a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law, I went over a little bit, the entire mm -hmm. law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. I would do, like, do if you don't. Do me, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Go to 34. Read 34 and, and lead into it. All right. Yeah. Uh, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Then Jesus answered. Then that Jesus replied. With with what 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 he replied. Go mm -hmm. ahead. And you can if you if you don't mind, we can quickly go over to Deuteronomy chapter six, just so that you can see that it was in the Old Testament, just so you can see how it was uh, said, and and uh, we'll read that real quick, and then we'll proceed. My Bible. All right, hold on. Here I come. Um, so yeah, hopefully you all having an easier time getting there. All right. Uh, this Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four and five, and it read, uh, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your mind and all your strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's just so that you would know that it wasn't just some Jesus made up on the fly. <laughs> that when he said that, you know, when they was asking about Moses and all that, like they knew what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the things that I uh, do want, want to share is um, we have to count up the cost of love and marriage. And in this case, we're going to focus on love. You have to count up the cost of love and know and be aware that there is a cost. Um, and that investment is is you. It's, it's you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Like you can't shift it and say, well, would you take the responsibility of loving God for me? No, God, the Lord, our God has called us to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind and our add all of our strength. Mm -hmm. Um, so the investment when it comes to love and marriage is you. And I would like for you to write that down if you're taking notes. That love and marriage requires the investment of you. You can't pay it out like with stuff. You can't stuff it with stuff. Resources like like you can you can buy things or you can give outside things to express it to some degree but an individual knows when it is genuine they'll know if you are all in it 
yeah. So, so, so that's good too, because that means if, if, if I am the main investment into a relationship, then you have to be careful about who you, who you are investing in. You'll be more mindful. Like if, if you yes. know that, okay, I'm the main investment for this particular person or this particular relationship, then I'm not just going to invest myself into just anybody because because you're not going to get a return. Mm. You, you're not going to get a, 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 a you know you're not going to get a return, or you're not going to get the type of return. You're not going to get the type of return that is due to you. And they, they go now. I would like to interject there because when it comes to investing, you invest with the notion mm -hmm. of rec a receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it's compounded. Mm -hmm. But but you so so again, to, to get to the point, this is why you don't rush into marriage. This is why you don't just have a relationship with anybody. Because just think about all. Yeah, I told you I'm not playing with y'all this year. <laughs> just think about all of the people you've invested in. Mm. Think about all of the relationships you you invested your your body in all the relationship you invested your time your space like just think about all those relationships that you 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 made the investment based on how you felt at the moment you didn't take into consideration logically what kind of person this was like you just you just did now think about those relationships now that's not for you to, to be like oh my god that's for you to say okay wait a minute going forward I'm going to make sure that the person, check this out, the person I'm investing my time with is the same person, that person themselves is investing in what's most important to me that should be most important to them. And that would be, according to the text, that would be God first. And then they have this sense of loving themselves so they can love others. Are y'all with me? So I need to know, OK, how are you? What's what's your relationship with God? Like, that's a good question to ask. Why y'all getting to know each other? What's your favorite color and what's your favorite food? And what restaurant do you like? And what's your dream vacation? Like, whatever that is, what's your relationship with God? Because I need to know what that looks like. If like I'm not talking about you, you just, you know, you, you walking into the third heaven. I'm not talking about I'm just I'm like, I need to know you are building a relationship with God. And I need to see that on a regular basis to say, OK, wait a minute, they're not, you know, this holier than thou person, but they are doing what they can that is necessary for them. Again, they're single, too. So their their main concern is how they please God. Thank you. That's what I want to see as a single person connecting with another single person, Christians. I need to see if this if this person who y'all got to. Everybody who go to church ain't saved. Mm. And everybody who claim they Christians, not y'all. Y'all got to get there. Just because they go to church, that don't mean they Christians. Just because they go to church, that don't mean they saved. So, so, so I need to figure out, are you, are you doing the best you can to please God? Because if they're not doing what they can to please God, then you might want to take a backpedal a little bit and kind of, you know, get a, a bird's eye view on how they interact with their mom, how they interact with their children, how they interact with if they if they already got children, how they interact with their their friends. You know what I'm saying? What do they do when they're down? Like you got to pay attention to that and trust the signs that you see. Nasty. Because if you don't, you get involved and now you're involved in something that you feel like, oh, my God, I got myself in this. I don't know why y'all talk about that. Oh, my God. But you got involved in something. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't, I didn't see them invest. I didn't see them uh, uh, be concerned about how they may please God. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking about Christian worldview. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So with that being said, uh, with love and marriage, it involves relationship. Good. It is not just religion. And what I mean by religion, I mean, it's just not a routine thing. I do this every right. time. like dun, 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 dun. Religion will box you in, mm -hmm. but relationship will open it up mm -hmm. and it makes room for life happenings. Whether it is a good happening or a what's happening, mm -hmm. it, 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 it gives that space for that. Uh, I love, I, I, I remember my 
uh, religion uh, professor, Dr. Branch, she will always say, make space for grace, make room for it. And so when it comes to relationship, that's what's needed, space for grace. Mm -hmm. When it's love, it's space for grace mm -hmm. to, to grow and to, to experience right. uh, what life is. But anyway, uh, remember that love revolves relationship, marriage revolves relationship. Both parties that's involved in re the relationship must be fully involved and engaged in a relationship. Right. If one is missing or absent, whether absent minded, absent in their heart, absent mm. in their uh, strength, uh, uh, absent in any part of it, then guess what? We're no longer relating. Mm. So now I am just what? Just there. And so I think that a lot of times there may be what uh, many uh, people are experiencing in their relationship with the Lord is just, well, I went to church. Right. Or I went to Bible study and I went to prayer and I gave to the needy. But it's like mm -hmm. you missing it. Why? Because you just kind of offering up him things. Mm -hmm. But he is asking for you. Your checklist, your, mm -hmm. chick, your Christianity checklist. Yes. But there's no real relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so and even in uh, when you think about the scripture text that Patrick just read uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, even as uh, single individuals, it's like when you have properly opened up your heart to the Lord, um, then you can now in turn share that when it's time with others mm -hmm. and when it's time with a, with a, with a spouse. Mm -hmm. um, and so even when it comes to marriage, I believe that a lot of marriages are experiencing frustration because it's like, what are we doing in this relationship? Mm -hmm. Somebody's not relating That's good. Uh, anymore. And I'm it's so like glad you said that. Uh, when we were uh, dating or when you were dating or when you were um uh, I'll say interested in that person. Newlyweds. Uh huh. Or, or even you know pre -new newlywed. Mm -hmm. uh, you 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 took time and effort. You would hold the phone. It was time involved. Mm -hmm. It was energy involved. It was you discovering and trying mm -hmm. to figure out what uh, they like or didn't like, and you was willing even to do those things and, and make the necessary adjustments. But then as you enter into marriage and you do it the right way, it's kind of like, look, you're getting on my nerve and you need to just deal with it. And it's like, wait a minute. That's not fair. But you know? I think they, be, I think when that happens, there's the relationship part has diminished and the religion part has be, begin to kick in. So right. that's when it becomes routine. You know, eight o'clock, I get home at five o'clock, we eat dinner at six, we like to go to bed with the children. It's robotic, it's yes. like it's not but so there's no relationship being built. There's no love being uh, uh um expressed or cultivated. Mm -hmm. So here's what I here's what I real this is what I believe. This is what I believe. You're trying to go with your little <laughs> flow on your paper. Here's what I believe. <laughs> here's what I believe. I believe when and y'all can disagree. Here's what I like, like they're not going to disagree unless I tell. Here's what I believe. I believe that when adultery happens in a marriage or it's taking place or staleness, or, or staleness happens in this, your relationship with the Lord. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, they're just talking about with people. Okay. All right, right, right. Don't interrupt me no more. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> when that happens, I believe that the love relationship, lo uh -huh. the love relationship, what I get. Love, <laughs> you read my mind. The okay. love relationship with God, it has been something's got, somebody's got, someone has gotten off track mm. with God. Remember now, God is love and God expresses love. So if I'm being in relationship with love, God, if I'm being in relationship with God, I too am going to express love and protect and cover and grace and wiggle room and all the things that come with love with my spouse. I guarantee you, I guarantee you somewhere communication stopped between me and the spouse and also communication stopped between that person and God. Mm -hmm. Because remember now he says, you gotta, you gotta, your time is divided between God and your spouse. If I'm, if I'm not with my spouse anymore, I'm being redundant. If I'm not, paying attention and pleasing my spouse anymore, I guarantee you somewhere along the way, you stop pleasing God. Mm -hmm. You stop seeking to please God. Mm -hmm. 
And then, therefore, you stop seeking to please your spouse. Mm -hmm. And it became, it, it became only about you mm -hmm. and not about God or the neighbor, just about you alone. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's how those things, mm -hmm. uh, that love or the routine or, you know what I'm saying? It just something just not, it's not Listen, working. It's not for, clicking. For instance, um, people or uh, spouses will begin to say, well, I pay the bills. And yeah. then uh, another spouse will say, well, I gave them, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's more to it than that. Correct. Like, you know, you can go through all of those actions, but I if you it. are not present, uh -huh. right? Then it's like, I felt that you mm -hmm. were not here. You mm -hmm. know, like you just doing it just because like, and, and the truth be told, and you can, I'm pretty sure that you all can attest to this. It's like, if you don't want to give it like, keep it mm -hmm. you know it's like i don't i don't want it because you're not even here i would right. rather have you here with me right. and enjoying it versus you doing like i'm, I'm an assignment mm -hmm. like i don't want it to be like an i am an assignment Correct. i want it to be an enjoyment a good work right. that you're doing like we know that we're we responsible for things but no one wants to feel like a duty, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You want to feel like, ooh, like you enjoy me and I enjoy like you. you. Said, yes, I, this yes. Is, I intended to come here and, you know, you know, rub your feet after a long day's work. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's, yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to do that. Yeah. That was one way I wanted to express the love that I have for you uh, is by doing that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and even, it's the small things. It don't have to be going to the mall. Right. Okay, this is totally off the script, but I do uh -oh. want to share this, and I don't know if Patrick, <laughs> like, yeah. but Patrick just experienced a birthday, and listen, I am working on doing exactly what he asks sometimes, even when it's uncomfortable. Okay, but one of the requests that he made was that I could not spend money yeah, for say, his I birthday. I know, okay, well, I'm gonna stop. Go ahead. But, okay, so with that being said, I had to dig in and be creative. Correct. And so I, I have to admit the lesson that I learned in that is that money makes uh, expression easy. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to just say, OK, well, give me the card and I'm going to go and buy something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we try to pick the most expensive things so we can say, "Ooh, yeah, you really love me because right. you spent ten thousand dollars. And that's like, no. Um, but then it is those small gestures, those small things that require energy thought and provoking. thought. And it's like mm -hmm. you put your foot in it like you really thought about mm -hmm. that. Like you, 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 you thought about me. Like so you. Gonna, so I'm going to interrupt her. No, don't so tell. I got this don't, text. Don't, don't, don't do that. I didn't want to share that I am. Patrick. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. I got this text message. <gasps> and in the text message, it was Patrick, a please. list of things. Uh, and... It made me feel valued. This text message that my wife gave me, it made me feel valued. Like I was like, wow, like she, like she really, you can, I can tell, it, it wasn't like, you know, happy birthday, boo, I love you. It was like, it was real thought out. And I was like, wow, she pays <clears throat> attention to me. And it, it, brought, it brought value to me again, you know, but it just, it made me feel like, yeah, okay, this is what's up, you know what I'm saying? And so with that being said, I think um, when it comes to, and we have to get into the text, but when it comes to the word of God, right? When it comes to the word of God, he has already set, set so much affection upon you, but we miss it because we don't get in it and read the text. Now, Patrick said something that was interesting. So he, he received a text message. This is the original That's text good. message. That's good. So what about if I had a missed the moment mm -hmm. and I did not receive the creativity to do what the Lord gave me to do? All right. I put it like this. What I gather from what Patrick just said is the words touched his life mm -hmm. and it touched in a way that nothing that could be bought could could do. Correct. This is what the original text does. Yeah. 
it, I mean, okay, so like the malls are closed down in some cases, movie theaters, those things that used to grab our attention and used to be that uh, placeholder or mm -hmm. whatever to kind of uh, sedate us mm -hmm. or keep us distracted from really getting in the word of God. Those things are now limited. And at one point they were all closed, but don't miss it during this season if you get what I'm saying, this season where things are limited and modified, don't miss the text. Right. Don't miss receiving God's love that is especially designed and tailor-made for us, mm -hmm. you know? Because, because words change our life. They shape us. Mm -hmm. Now, you just expressed how you felt with words coming from, from me. Imagine how much more right. when it comes from the Lord. Right. When you find out I'm the apple of His eye and that He bottles my tears. So mm -hmm. I find out that when I cry, it's not a waste. Yeah, that's good. Oh my God. You mean to tell me you bottle my tears and I remember wiping it, but some way you you capture it? Mm -hmm. Like, Lord, I'll take it. Yeah. So now I realize that my life is worth living. It's valuable. Uh, another thing I was just reflecting and pondering on is uh, when it comes to my life, like, uh, I'm here. I think mm -hmm. about being born in 1976 and how in Whoa. 1973 um, the laws changed in the land for yes, abortions indeed. to be made legal. Look, the atmosphere was set that I didn't have to be here, mm -hmm. but God saw fit. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, in the midst of things that happen, hardships or whatever, it is nothing compared to the gift of life and experiencing life with the Lord and beautiful loved ones yeah. that genuinely love me and that love us. Have rejection been a part of my story? Yes. Have abandonment been a part of my story? Yes. But it cannot compare to the acceptance that I have in Christ. Mm -hmm. It cannot compare to the love and acceptance I have from my spouse and my children, like my friends. It cannot compare to the love right. that I'm experiencing. Right. It's all good. Okay. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to read Luke 10. Uh, it's the same so Luke gave his account uh, on the the uh, the incident that happened, and uh, then we'll, we'll we'll touch on it. And we got we got about five minutes, Shamika Harrington. Okay. Uh, let me up. see. Mm, uh, let's just dig again. Go, just yeah. Let's just dig again. Anyway. I, I want to. Yay! I want. Right. Okay. So when it says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Uh, thou shalt love uh, involves uh, persons or people. Mm -hmm. And what th th this love is a agapo, uh, we say agape love, um, but the Lord has, uh, that definition is to welcome, and this is, I'm giving Greek definitions, but when they say thou shalt love, it is to welcome, to entertain, to be fond of, to love deeply. Mm -hmm. Of things is say to be well pleased, to be contented at or with a thing. Mm -hmm. So now, when it comes to thou shalt love, and, and remember the words that come after is the Lord thy God. So the way that the, the if we wanted to exhaust the scripture, it will say thou shalt welcome, entertain, mm -hmm. be especially especially fond of, welcome and be well pleased with who? The Lord, Lord thy God. Right. Let that sink in. Welcome him. He's on the scene. Mm -hmm. And I think that the most beautiful thing that the Lord could have ever done was make himself invisible. I'm, I'm just saying, like, we don't have to go to a specific, a specific place to find him. Mm -hmm. He is an ever-present help. And so he's saying, take time to know me. Welcome me in. I want to get to know you. And, and I just came up with a rhyme. Welcome me in so we can become friends. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, and then all, I love the way that, oh, so we say the Lord. Let me go back. Oh, thou shall love the Lord. The Lord. Um, this, this is involved in respect and reverence. Um, the Lord is the master. Mm -hmm. Like he is in control. And I need you to embrace that. This is not a bad thing to have a master because the truth be told, and maybe you haven't even thought about it, but you are being mastered by something or someone. Let me go back. By someone. 
right? Uh, and what I mean by that, it's not like a person to person, but uh, you, the way that your life is influenced or your point of reference, it comes from either that which is holy or unholy. Mm -hmm. And again, we have very limited time, but I would love to dive in some more. We would love to dive in some more, but just don't just like shirk at the idea of, you know, uh, right. you know. So anyway, just surrender to the Lord. Amen. Amen. All is a small three letter word that contains everything. Mm -hmm. So all in this text mean all whole completely. And then we get to the part where what the requirements are. So because of time. Mm -hmm. I think you have what I think you have. Mm -hmm. Would you just touch on what they are? Okay, go. You do it. No, no, you do it. Okay. Well, see, y'all like how your notes look. They look simple. Mine is so complicated. Okay, I'm let a me woman. do it. <laughs> I'm, a woman like this. <laughs> I'm just saying, women use use more words than men. That's true. Hey, man, we just more. We hey, we diverse. You we dynamic. Are, you guys are amplified version. Come on, <clears throat> amplified. With a message version. Come on, let's go. <clears throat> All right. So then, the, so so. So the, script, the scripture tells us to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. The heart is the seat. I thought you got these. Don't you got these? Come on, Patrick. The seat of thoughts, mm -hmm. passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, and endeavors. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is about you, that is what you give to God. So all this is about giving it over to God. Why? God cares about you. Everything that you care about, God cares about as well. So when I'm loving God with all my heart, I'm, I'm allowing the seat of the core of my thoughts to be to where, it's, where, the, where it's housed or where it's mm -hmm. it is, is established. Come on. I am giving that over to God. You, you got to do this. this He's is your point of reference. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. With my soul, my psyche, the seat of my feelings. See, mm -hmm. that's why you got to, even your feelings, you got to be like, okay, God, what do I do with this feeling? What, I, what do I do with how I feel about this? And I bring this to God because I feel some kind of way about the way, you know what I'm saying, my wife did whatever. I feel some kind of way about the way my husband, you know what I'm saying, God, what do I do with this feeling? Help me out because if I, if I do what I feel right now, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get about no ideas. The, uh, the desires, the affections, the aversions, those things I dislike as well, I need to give that to God as well so he can help me deal with those things. Mm -hmm. My mind, the faculty of understanding. I mean, there's many moving parts there. Yeah. Let's make it plain. Yeah. The many moving parts to how I comprehend a thing. Mm-hmm. He's saying, give me that. Yeah. Word, love me with that. Mm. So, so if I could go ahead. Go no, ahead. you go. You go. All right. So if I could give this right quick, it's like the uh, uh, um, knowledge, because I'm dealing with understanding, but I'm trying to get the knowledge. Ask the knowledge. Ask the question. What? Like what type of information? Uh, uh, why? What? Uh, I mean, wisdom. What? Ask the question. Uh, when and where? And understanding the faculty or the things that make up understanding, ask the question, why and how? So if you really want to understand a thing, you want to know why that thing is, and you want to know how does that thing work. It gives you the way to get understanding. The mechanics. The mechanics. Of it. That's Amen. good. Amen. I like that. And, and again, I, I know I have shared this before, but this is why it is so, so very vital that you, when you have a little one, that you go ahead and start to shape and mold their, 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 their uh, hearts and bend it towards the Lord. That's so good. it can be easy because if you take too long, things can get complicated and it makes it harder they be it becomes rigid mm -hmm. and so their hearts are not tender and pliable now i'm not saying like brainwash anybody Correct. or you know force anything but you definitely want to establish your home in wisdom in knowledge in understanding and in the atmosphere of love why so if we disagree if we if it an aversion pop up right then it's like this is how we're going to handle it right this is why it's so important to have a relationship with the lord both uh a, a husband and a wife 
or in, in, in this case, if you're single, that you have a point of reference, mm -hmm. you have a frame of reference. This is where I am basing or structuring my life on, right. on my relationship with the Lord. That even if it doesn't go my way, mm -hmm. we recently were sharing with some believers over the, uh, this past week, but it, it's like, even, even when the answer is no from the Lord, mm -hmm. I love you anyway, Lord. Yeah. And if it's yes, it's like, yes, I rejoice. And I don't take on this attitude like you owe it to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I realized that the answer to many of my prayers was a result of you building my faith and my trust in you. Mm -hmm. So that when a no came, I would still remain. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's good. So, so she, she said something that and was great. And I don't want you to, too. I want you to, we don't want to gloss over the fact that when it comes to the children, it's, it's better for the children that's good. It is better for the children to receive God because they see you interacting with God. They or have an awareness they, of it too. Yeah. Like it should be easy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to no, cut no, you no, off. But like, because you can't make a child receive. You can't make Correct. anyone receive. But it should be such an atmosphere that you don't know God. Like right. it's just, they have an awareness of it. Why? Because I've seen my dad and mama pray and I've seen my mama pray or I've seen my daddy pray. When whatever case or situation that you're in, like you want to make it so life is easier or better for your your, your the next generation right. that's the whole purpose so, of us going through uh -huh. a lot of things the you know because we're also in history month in black history month the reason why so many of those that have gone before us why they laid down their lives was because they had us in mind mm -hmm. they didn't actually see our face but they wanted life to be better for mm -hmm. us why did they do that because they was like you deserve it they knew that i want the next generation to not experience the pain that we are experiencing right. and i'm willing to lay my life down right. for who for patrick Mm -hmm. for Shamika, for whoever else, you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's the same thing that is done when it comes to uh, rearing children. Right. I do this because I want it to be better for you right. and for my grandchildren right. and great-grandchildren, those that I see afar off that I may never get to lay my eyes on, but I do know that's coming down the line. Right. And, so, and so, so when they get that as a young age, uh, and they get to see, uh, your expression of love toward God because you're trying to please God and, and you're trying to please, you know, how you please your God and how you please your spouse. When they when they when they come across a a um, a professor who 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 takes a stab at the faith, or then yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not as difficult to give them uh, historical and uh, scriptural documentation which is to historical. help them understand, which mm -hmm. is history, to help them understand that the way that they believe and what they believe is is true and and right. And uh, that happens though because of um, what you grow up showing them. Remember now, children, children do what you do more than what you say. Amen. All right. So then, uh, and, and so Matthew doesn't give the word strength, but Mark and Luke does give the word, loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and your strength, your ability, your force, uh, your might, uh, your energy, if I could say that, uh, your movement. If I move in such a way, I want to move and check this good. I, like I want to walk in such a way. I want to move in such a way that it doesn't make God look bad. Mm -hmm. I, I need y'all to get that. I, I want When I'm walking, I'm not walking trying to attract other women. When my wife is not walking, she should not be walking trying to attract other men. So I, I, and you got to, we're being real, y'all, some, some, they're, they're intentional about how they can get the, the uh, people Attention. to approve of them. But I want to make sure that my movement, my strength, my work is always about about God. You, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whatever honor. that is. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's, that, does, does this honor him? Does this give him glory? Correct. Like you cannot control what a person think True. about you, but you can control what your intentions were when you got up to get right. ready. You know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, and we're not saying that you just, I mean, you got uh -uh, flannel shirts it. and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, whatever you look like, you're going to, so I'm not saying, like, you just go out bombing. I'm not talking about being bombing. You know, dress to the nine. But, you know, just, does, do Keep you in think, mind, why if God came down it? now, would God like what I got on? You know what I'm saying? Amen. If God came down now, would God like what I'm thinking? 
If God came down now, what came down now, would God like the feelings that I'm having? If, if God came to me now and he can understand my heart, he does. Would he like the desires that I'm desiring right now? You feel what I'm saying? Like, anyway. OK, so go ahead. You can. I'm going to let you end with whatever it is that you want to end with. All right. So. I, I, I am going because my notes are good. Now, it may not flow together with you. all just work with us, <laughs> work with me. But I would like for you to write down or take into strong consideration that love is a choice mm -hmm. and a decision to focus one attention and affection. The Lord, this this is what you are able to do. I'm telling you, the Lord would not ask you to do something that you are incapable of doing. Mm. Let that sink in. He's not going to ask you to do something. So you know, you know, Patrick just shared, uh, you know, the seed of the seed of uh, the seed of your affections and the seed of your heart and your feelings and where all of this is housed. And it's like, ooh, it can be complicated. No, it's like those deep thoughts. You know what those deep thoughts are. You know though. You know the core of you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Lord, I, 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 I may not have a full understanding of the of my makeup, but what, with what part I do understand, I'm going to give that to you. Amen. And then he'll begin to open it up as you continue to develop. So love is a choice and a decision to focus one's attention and affection. Love requires energy and effort. Let that sink in. Like don't love is not haphazard. Oops, I just fell in. No, you just don't just, you know, you may experience it suddenly, but you don't just fall in it. Like, no, it took it. It, it takes energy and effort. All right. The next thing is love must love is designed to relate and connect. It's not intended to abide alone. All right. And so with that being said, uh, again, the one loving, uh, loving another has chosen to set his or her affections upon this someone or something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so when let's let's continue to stick in the, the vein of the Lord, I've chosen to set my affections on knowing him. Who are you in Lord? Would you show me? who I am in you, um, that takes intentionality. It takes focus. It takes energy. It may require you getting up a little earlier. It may require you staying up a little later. It may require you to to have uh, to, to take your your lunch period, your lunch time or your break to just get away to say, OK, Lord, would you help me today or whatever that thing is. But basically you are setting aside time within your 24 hour span to say, I want to get to know you. I just want to try and see what will come of it. All right. Um, and then this is the last thing uh, we are to steward our heart and to be a steward means to manage it well. Mm -hmm. You are responsible for your heart uh, and, and the things that, um, let's let me stay focused. We are the steward of our heart. And I know that many quotes are out there and they say, follow your heart. Um, but in this case, when you become responsible, we know, let me go back. We know, and I'm pretty sure that you can probably recall to your mind times that maybe you followed your heart and your heart led you the wrong way. But you really did think in your heart that there was right because it felt so good mm -hmm. but it's like the enemy the enemy of right is good mm -hmm. and, and but right is always good mm -hmm. but good is not always right mm -hmm. need you let that sink in it's not always okay uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that you are to lead your heart into righteousness and worship to the Lord. Um, and I, I would even say righteousness. He develops that. Right. Because our righteousness is as of filthy rags. Mm -hmm. But we are to lead our heart into what adoring and setting our affection and our attention upon the Lord, our God. Right. Amen. And so just let that, I, I need you to know that you are to lead your heart in, in this case. You make it trust God. You make it believe God. You do what the Lord has asked us to do, which is to love him with all of it. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So remember and be mindful that the heart is desperately wicked and it is capable of deceiving you and making you believe a lie. Check Jeremiah 17, 9. I'm not going to read it. I want you to read it. 
read Jeremiah 17, 9. And that is why it is so important that you guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 and 23. Check it out. Now, that guarding means you better tend well to it. Mm -hmm. Guard it and pay attention. Why? Because if you don't guard your heart, you're basically leaving your heart wide open. Open for whatever and anything. And you'll look up down the line of your life and you'll be like, what happened? And you'll be able to go back and trace, dog it. Mm -hmm. Man, I messed up. Ooh, we don't want to continue to have a, a, a life full of regrets. We want to start gaining rewards. Amen. So we're going to set our affection on things above. Right. Who is above or what's above? The things of God. It's higher than the way we, things that's, that's on earth. Amen. Amen. So anyway, I hope that that helped. And now we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way to come back to one. Amen. You know what? And I'm, I'm going to mm -mm. ask Patrick this too. Mm -mm. And I'm telling y'all what I'm going to mm -mm. Okay, I'm not going to tell him. I'm not going to tell y'all, but I got something that just came to my mind. I'm going to ask Patrick about it and then we'll make you aware of it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You going to pray? You can pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We thank you in the name of Jesus, the God, for this opportunity to be able to uh, uh, be before your people. Uh, we pray that someone um, was able to hear and understand, and it was able to be a blessing to someone, that their lives would be affected by it, and their loved ones would be affected by it, um, their legacy would be affected by it as well, O oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear God, for all that was said. We pray, um, well, we thank you for your protection and we thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us. Yes. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Thank to you, be, Lord. Uh, the one who knew no sin became sin and said that those us, of us who were sinners could be called the righteousness of God. Thank so you we for thank you, dear God. And we love you, God, for mm. all those things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.